everyone thanks for tuning in welcome to my channel i'm monica and i make art videos it's been a week i hope you had a fantastic week in today's video we're gonna talk acrylic gouache holbein acrylic gouache to be exact i got the paints recently and to be honest with you guys it took me so long to really overthink this decision because to be honest they're super expensive they're really hard to get here in my country. I live in Germany and it's pretty much impossible to get them in local art stores, especially now during COVID. I decided to get them because I found a really good deal. After seeing so many amazing artists have amazing results with these paints and me being a huge gouache nerd, I just decided I need them. <laughs> So I can imagine that you might be in a similar situation. Maybe you live in a country where it's really hard to get them and you're thinking, is it worth to ship them from overseas? They're really expensive. I'm not sure about them. This video is for you. So if you are familiar with regular gouache, this I can tell right away. They're not just different, they're tricky. Let me tell you that. So in this video, I will show you painting process, talk about the pros and the cons and give you some tips by the end of the video. Okay, a very brief list of materials. Here is cancer mixed media paper, super sturdy and versatile. And for tracing the sketch onto the paper, I will be using these Prismacolor Cold Erase pencils. So the day I got the paints in the mail, I actually sat down and made these swatch cards. And I'm really glad that I did because Usually I do have swatches in my sketchbook, but having them on these tiny cards makes it much easier for me to mix and match. And my palette is just wet parchment paper. This time I put a little more thought into the piece itself, so I planned everything out on my iPad Pro using Procreate. So, what's one of the good traits of acrylic gouache? Let's start right off the bat with the extremely high pigmentation. I heard about it before, but experiencing it in real life really is next level. It's a completely different story. So, I did get deceived by the small size of the tubes and I was a little sad about it first time I got them, but in actuality, a little goes a really long way you guys furthermore the main selling point probably is the fact that they're not water soluble once they dry and they dry really really fast so working in layers without lifting the previous layers is probably one of the main reasons people consider to buy them in the first place now this one is a double-edged sword and i will get back to it later if you're familiar with using oils or watercolors, then you probably know the term of glazing. And glazing is basically just putting a thinner layer on top of something so that the surface below shines through. And this is exactly what you can do with acrylic gouache by using a little more water and just a little amount of paint. And by little, I mean just a really tiny, tiny bit, because again, they're very highly pigmented. And you can't really do that with regular gouache, because if you put a mix that is a little more diluted on top of a thicker layer, you will just basically end up with muddy colors, because all the colors end up blending together which makes me really frustrated so with regular gouache the way to go is to go thick with acrylic gouache you really don't have to worry about any of that which is pretty cool but then i noticed how velvety it is if you work with gouache a lot especially with cheaper paints but even with the more expensive ones i sometimes find that they still look a little grainy or chalky and I did not notice that at all with acrylic gouache from Holbein brand. Granted, I haven't tried other brands, so I can't tell you if this is a Holbein thing or if this is just a trait of acrylic gouache. And then something that bugs a lot of people about acrylics is that they are shiny, which you don't have with acrylic gouache whatsoever. 
you have a really matte finish and it looks exactly just like regular gouache. I couldn't tell the difference. And lastly, it doesn't crack as easily as regular gouache. This is mainly due to the fact that both of them use different binders. So Acrylic gouache has acrylic binders in them, which is waterproof. Regular gouache, on the other hand, has gum arabic in it, and it's a water-soluble binder. And that's why you can't paint your pots with it, unfortunately. But you can do so with acrylic gouache, no problem. Now, let's come to the dark side of acrylic gouache. So, there is one thing that really, really surprised me, because I did my research and people basically said that you can really take your time with these paints, they don't dry that quickly. Guys, I really disagree with that. So, in my opinion, acrylic gouache dries insanely fast and that even with precautions. So, for instance, I'll tell you my setup. My paint sit on a piece of parchment paper that is totally soaked in water and with a wet towel sitting underneath, so it's constantly being checked on, it is still wet, yet the paints still dry on me. This is just insane. Which brings me to the next point and that is how easy it is to ruin your brushes. Better do not use your fancy brushes with acrylic gouache, at least not in the beginning. Another thing is that once it's on paper, you can't really work with it for too long, I find. You can't really move it around and there's just something about the consistency of this paint that is just so, so weird because first time you see them, they just seem more watery out of the tube. So it does look thinner and runnier than regular gouache, but also it's just so, so sticky. So besides it looking runny, spreading it just straight out of the tube, I don't know how people do it, you guys, because I tried it and to me it just felt way too, well, I can't find another word other than sticky. So your intuition basically tells you to use more water, but that way you dilute it to a consistency that it is not opaque anymore. But in order for it to be spread smoothly, you want to add more water, but then it's too thin to cover. So it was a constant loop of adding more water, but then, you know, adding more paint, but then it's too sticky. So I add more water again, but just a bit, but now the color isn't right. So I need to use white to make it opaque again. and. Oh, you guys, that was a learning curve. So yeah, the sticky nature of it. I feel like the paint wants to sit on the brush and the brushes behave differently from what I know. They just feel less flexible. And the bristles are more stiff for sure. So in a way, very similar to acrylics in terms of stickiness. We're at the peel porn part now, which means that the painting is done, and also you survived my rambling. Congratulations, by the way, if you made it here. To conclude this time lapse, I'm pretty content with how this turned out, considering how I didn't know what I was doing. Alright, so let's talk about the things that I learned, and I have some tips for you. So my first tip is to really take your time. If you have a busy day ahead, it's not really the sort of paint you would use if you want to, let's say, go and have a one hour painting sesh and finish an entire painting in one hour. Working with acrylic gouache is really time consuming due to the fact that they dry so fast and you have to clean your brushes all the time. And that brings me to tip number two, and that is to work fast. In my opinion, it is highly advised to plan out your painting beforehand because once you have the paint on your palette, you don't really have time to think much. Tip number three is for covering smaller areas, and that is to just take a tiny tad, a tiny splotch out of the tube because, again, it dries super fast and you don't really want to waste your paints. Number four, covering large areas. So my tip here is to pre-mix really thoroughly. 
you really want to keep mixing, mixing and blending longer than you are maybe used from regular gouache. My experience is it is just really hard for two different colors to mix really evenly. You just do not get deceived by the high amount of pigments. Once you run out of paint, it is basically pretty much impossible to mix the very same color again. Just trust me on this one. I tried, it happened to me and it just didn't work. So in this case, don't try to save money. Tip number five is if you need to take a break, and I highly advise you to take breaks, find something like maybe a topper of Tupperware or something else to cover the mixing area. Because even if you're using a stay wet palette or a wet parchment paper like I did, acrylic gouache just dries so insanely fast, I tell you guys. My next tip is if you want to cover an area or maybe cover up layers below and you want to have that evenly opaque look, keep in mind that you might probably need more than just one layer. Up to three layers sometimes depending on the color and that is especially if you want to go from darker to lighter. Tip number eight. So this one's important. You might have guessed it but don't put your brushes away mindlessly. You really want to clean them thoroughly like every minute. Please only use synthetic brushes and the sturdier the bristles the better because you have to go and clean them all the time and they have to survive that. The other reason why you want them to be sturdy is in case the paint dries on them, chances are much higher that you can still save them. If the bristles are super soft and fragile, it's game over. Tip number nine, if you make a mistake, try not to lift the paint by scrubbing the paper. You will do things worse. I did it with an eraser brush and it worked, but I ruined the paper and I made things worse. <laughs> it's raining. My tip is to just wait for it to dry completely and then you can paint over. And now my final tip. So even though the result looks just like gouache, I would advise you to consider acrylic gouache to be more acrylics than gouache. They feel similarly and they have the same binder anyway. I find them easier to use than acrylics though. I prefer acrylic gouache because acrylics are even stickier and thicker and they leave these very evident brush strokes. So what's my conclusion? Do I love them? Do I recommend them? Honestly, I hate them and I love them. Seriously, you guys, it was like, why the f don't you behave like I want you to? Why are you so difficult? And they were like, I'm not difficult. You just don't understand me. <laughs> so yeah, it's a turbulent relationship for sure, but also very rewarding. Anyway, point is, it takes time to get the hang of it, but the pros outweigh the cons in my opinion. I love how gouache looks, but I also like to paint over an area a lot. I constantly find me changing my mind about a color and with regular gouache there's only so many layers you can do. Putting a thinner layer on top never really works. With regular gouache at some point everything will just lift and mix together. The end result is a muddy color. So the main downside to acrylic gouache in comparison to regular gouache is really how fast it dries and the sticky consistency. By the end of the painting, I had figured out how to deal with it though, and I had a lot of fun. In a way, acrylic gouache forces me to be more mindful about my decisions. What I mean by that is, to me, painting is not only a relaxing, creative activity, to me it's also problem solving. So my main goal is always to learn something along the way. And I definitely did this with acrylic gouache. So there you go. If you have acrylic gouache and maybe your experience is different or you have some tips for us, you know where to go. So this is it for the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a fantastic day. See you in the next one.